Welcome to Christ Supreme Ministry, the House of Restoration. We invite you to worship with us and receive the Spirit-filled message as we hear from the Lord. God bless you as you listen, in Jesus' name. tonight in the name of Jesus we thank the Lord for his faithfulness and here we are today the ninth day of this fasting and praying program the Lord has been very faithful and I remember the word of God in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 7 that says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof yes and the patient in the spirit oh yes better than the proud in the spirit so the Lord has been with us. We've been patient from day one, trusting the Lord. And I assure us by the grace of God that tonight we are going to encounter the Lord 
and tomorrow by the grace of god the last day for confront and conquer is going to be a wonderful opportunity for us to enjoy the best of the lord so prepare yourself for tomorrow and for this night come with your family tomorrow by 5 p.m to the church and bring also your friend it shall be well with you in jesus name amen let us pray heavenly father we thank you for bringing us to the night day of this fasting and praying program Thank you, Father Lord, for what you have started from day one. Thank you, Lord, for your visitations. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers already. Thank you, Lord, for manifestations of all our prayers, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you have not called us to wait upon you in vain. Father, we return all glory and adoration unto you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Tonight, Holy Spirit Divine, we ask you, Lord Almighty God, minister to us at the point of our need, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit Divine Father, Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus, let the heavens over this meeting open and remain open in the name of Jesus. I take control over this uh, environment. I take control over territorial powers. Every part that is not of the Lord that want to hinder the smooth running of this program tonight, I render them useless in the name of Jesus. I paralyze any part that have been assigned to deny anyone from his or blessing. Lord, I render such power powerless, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit Divine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, once again, I want to seize this opportunity to thank the Lord uh, for what the Lord has started from day one. Uh, tonight is another fasters day. And tomorrow, by the grace of God, no fasters prayer. We are going to come to the church in person to enjoy, confront, and conquer. Tonight, uh, the Lord is going to help us. Uh, I want us, we'll be reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 39. Genesis, chapter 39. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 6. Genesis chapter 39, we'll read from verse 1 to 6. And uh, after that, we will go to, uh, we'll go to verse 20 to 23. But let's go to Genesis 39 from verse 1 to 6. I read, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard in Egypt, an Egyptian bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which brought him down hither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did. To prosper in his hand and Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hand verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptians, the Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Verse 6 now. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Praise the Lord. Let's stay here for now. Uh, let's stay here, stay here for now before we go to verse 20. Let's go back to verse uh, 1 to 6 again. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm sure that this encounter, we've read about it as children of God. And we've had messages about this. But this is a very loaded uh, chapter of the, uh, of the Bible. These few verses that we have read, very loaded. And it has deep meanings. But let's just look at it from verse 1. And the Lord says, after, the, I mean, the siblings of Joseph, his brothers, after they did all they did to Joseph, they eventually came to conclusion. And one of them brought a suggestion. 
Don't let us kill Joseph. Let us sell him into slavery. And let us see how he's going to fulfill his dream. So he was sold out to the Ishmaelite. So the Ishmaelite brought him over to the land of Egypt. And this was how he landed at his master's place, Potiphar. Potiphar, an officer, a captain guard of an Egyptian. He bought him off. So Joseph began to serve his master in his house. But let's go to verse 2. I want us to listen tonight and let us grab some things so that we can pray with understanding. So the moment Joseph came in into his master's house, the Bible described Joseph as a prosperous man. He was a slave boy. Yet the Lord said he was prosperous. Hallelujah. And it was in the house of his master, the Egyptians. Let me say this before we go to verse 3. Despite the fact that Joseph was bought as a personal property, as a personal slave. This was a good example of a bond servant, a bond slave, like I explained about two Sundays ago. Yes, Potiphar had bought him. Potiphar owned him for the rest of his life. But the Bible says that Joseph was a prosperous man. God might have seen something that Potiphar himself saw the impact later. But to an average person, Joseph was a slave. Joseph was bought. But God said, uh uh, this slave is a VIP slave. His own case is different. Even though, yes, he was tagged to be a slave, but God said that I have given him a divine exception. This is a, an honorable slave. This is a prosperous slave. Beloved, we need God to open our spiritual eyes. Though we might be going through challenges of life, though we might not have enough in our bank account, but what do you believe? Do you believe your bank account statement over the word of God? You, your bank account might be in red, but God can say, this is my son. He is a prosperous child of God. And many of us will say, oh, if I'm prosperous, why do I have just $10 in my account? Beloved, Joseph was a prosperous man. And let's see the confirmation in verse 3 now. In verse 3, and the Bible says that his master began to observe that the Lord was with Joseph. And that the Lord made everything that Joseph did prospered. In verse 4, it continued like that. Everything that Joseph did prospered. Why? Because he found grace. He found grace in the sight of God. And this is what we have been talking about. When we are talking about divine exception. We are talking about divine grace. That God we just locate you. We single you out and pull you out of multitude and make sure that your case is different. Every other slave in Egypt in those days, oh, they were wretched. Every other slave, oh, they had no hope. Every other slave in that city, in that country, Egypt, oh, their future was very bleak. But when it comes to Joseph, the Lord says that he found grace and he was a prosperous man and everything he laid his hands on prospered i pray for somebody tonight that the lord will disappoint your unbelief yes you might be looking at yourself very very low but the lord is saying you belong to the top so i pray for you every power and imagination of your heart that want to keep you at the valley of god's blessing those power are render them useless in the name of jesus you are coming out of that valley oh yes the lord will establish you at the top of the mountain in the name of jesus hallelujah at times i look at some believers we claim the word of god oh i am the head and not the tail oh we quote those bible passages but in reality many of us don't believe it how was it possible for god to call joseph prosperous while he's been bought over permanently as a bond servant many of us when god gave us revelation 
either through the word of God, either through messages like this, either through revelation or prophecy. Many of us, we despise it. Oh, if this is this, why am I still like this? Don't do that. The moment you do that, you are despising God. Joseph did not despise God. But let's continue. Everything in verse 5. Everything Joseph laid his hand on in his master's house prospered. The master began to experience enlightenment. Everything that the master had began to prosper. And the master saw that and said, wow, this is a VIP slave. And he said, and it came to pass. And the master, Potiphar said, you know what, Joseph, I put you in charge of everything. The only thing that I don't put you in charge is my wife. Everything that he had. Potiphar himself doesn't know what he had. Everything was in the hand of Joseph. Hallelujah. And because Joseph was in that house, the Lord says that for Joseph's sake, the Lord blessed the house of Potiphar. This is wonderful. I pray for somebody tonight. The blessing of the Lord that has accumulated. The blessing of the Lord that you are yet to see. That tonight you will have an encounter with the Lord. The Lord will open your eyes and it will manifest in the name of Jesus. In verse 6, as we quickly move. In verse 6, and he left. Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not all he had. He knew not. He knew not all he had. Meaning that he doesn't even know what he has. Except the fruit that will bring to him. Sir, this is your food. That is what he knows. Every other thing. Other slaves, materials, buildings, assets. What about you talking? Talk about the livestock. Like everything he does. He committed everything into the hands of Joseph. And the Lord prospered the man. So, because of our time. And the Bible said, describe Joseph as a goodly person, an handsome guy. He was good looking. And we know what happened there. I'm not going to go there because of our time. And the wife of his master, yes, attempted to lure uh, Joseph to commit immorality with him. And Joseph ran away. And at the end of the day, Joseph landed in the prison. Let's go to verse 20 now. From verse 20 uh, to 23. In verse 20, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. In verse 20, the reason why Joseph was in prison was because his master's wife told lie against him. He said, oh, Joseph tried to rape me. That was why Joseph landed in the prison. In verse 21 now, Yes, what happened? Get into the prison again. Remember, I called him a VIP prison, a, a, a VIP slave. Get into the prison again. The Lord was with him. The Lord never left him. And the Lord showed him mercy again and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison, the jailer. The Lord gave Joseph favor in his sight. What happened in verse 22? Because God was with him. And the keeper of the prison also committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was, I mean, he was the order of it. Can you see? He got to the prison again. God got there before him. God had prepared uh, the prison jailer and favored Joseph. And Joseph became a mini prime minister in the prison. And all other prisoners, old and young, it does not really matter what their case were. Every one of them reported to Joseph. Joseph became the master. He became the master in prison. Beloved, let me say this. Regardless of your location, regardless of your situation and circumstance, regardless of your background, if God is with you, you will shine in that situation and people will wonder, how are you doing it? Anytime you, are, you see people asking you, how are you doing it? Beloved, it is a confirmation that the Lord was with you. Anytime you get to a situation and people say, whoa, how did you do it? 
Did you just pass an exam? Did you got a job? Did you got married? Did you come out of any sickness? Did the Lord just bless you with a property? And people say, ah, ah are you doing it? I, I, I thought you were by yourself. Ah, why are you able to do this? Your answer should be, it is the Lord's doing. Because you might not see it, and people outside there might be seeing it. So Joseph was in that situation. He found favor before the Lord. In our last verse uh, for tonight, in verse 30, uh, 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. That which he did, the Lord made it so prosper. See, the jailer just went on sabbatical holiday. He just rested and committed everything to Joseph's hands. Say, just manage the place. So, this is to the extent to which God can do for his own children. God can go to any extent. Anytime we are talking about things like this, I remember the Israelite. God went to, I mean, so much extent to show that they were peculiar people. They were chosen of the Lord. And God went all, all the way down to bless them, to support them, to show them signs and wonder that they belong to the Lord. Beloved, I will not take much of our time tonight. We are talking about activating the grace of God for divine exception. We have read about Joseph. We saw how he was at Potiphar's place and the Lord favored him and the Lord prospered him. He got to the prison. Prison that was supposed, I mean, he was supposed to be in prison, going through hard time, tough time, being incarcerated, being dealt with roughly. No, he got there, he became a VIP prisoner and the Lord made him to find favor in the sight of the prisoner. But tonight, let us go on, uh, go ahead quickly. What are the lessons? What are the lessons we can learn from this? A few verses of the Bible that we have read tonight. So that we'll be able to pray with understanding. Four lessons that we are going to learn tonight. Don't forget, beloved, all the lessons that we learn every day. Let us pay attention to them. Please take your note. Write them down. Ponder over them. Reflect and meditate over, over them. It will bless you. It will give you a deeper insight into the ways and things of the Lord. The Lord will bless us tonight in the name of Jesus. Number one lesson that we must learn and apply to our life. Number one lesson is the fear of God. The fear of God. The fear of God is said to be the beginning of wisdom. Oh yes, fear of God. Why am I saying this? Any human being that does not have fear of God in whatever he or she does is like a city without war. If you don't fear God, you are like a city without war, meaning that anything goes. You can do anything at any time. But the fear of God will help you to restrain yourself the fear of God will help you not to compromise. The fear of God will make you to think twice before you put your hand into iniquity. Why are we saying this? When we go to Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 39 verse 9. Genesis chapter 39 verse 9. What did Joseph did when Potiphar's wife uh, uh, leered her and said, come over and lay with me look at what joseph and how joseph replied is on the screen now and joseph replied the uh, potiphar's wife his master's wife said there's no one greater in this house than i i know my position in this house that yes my boss has committed everything into my hand now let's go ahead neither had he kept any have he kept back anything from me but thee yes it is true Nobody is higher than me except you, madam, and my, my boss, Potiphar. My master has not kept anything away from me. Oh, yes, I have access to his uh, properties, to his assets, to his riches, to his slaves, to his livestock. Everything I have access. But you, his wife, yes, I do not have access to you. And what did he say? He said he had not kept back anything from me, but thee because thou art its wife now joseph said how then 
How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Can you see that, people of God? Just as fear the Lord. He said, how can I do this wickedness and sin against God? God gave Joseph understanding. He knew that if he did that, if he commit that atrocity, he knows that he has sinned against God. Not only against his master. Let me put it this way, people of God. Anytime you offend a fellow, a fellow believer, you have also committed sin against God. That is it. This is how I want us to, to understand this. If we want to enjoy divine exception, we must be careful the way we live our lives. We must be careful the way we conduct ourselves in our utterances, in our action, in our day-to-day -day, uh, relationship. You might offend somebody and the person might not talk. But you have committed a sin against your creator. So Joseph had that in mind. He said, I cannot do this. May I let us know, people of God, that that was the restraint on Joseph. If Joseph did not fear the Lord, oh yes, he will fall flat for debate. He will fall flat within two minutes. He will be thanking God. Yes. So mother men will say, Wow. God has answered my prayer. God has buttered my bread. Look at this thing. This woman is giving me, giving me a platter of gold. Some will even be speaking in tongue. I say, whoa, God has provided this. Oh, mm -mm. it is not God. God cannot provide that kind of opportunity to commit immorality with another man's wife or husband. Hallelujah. Number two. Number two lesson. Number two lesson is self-control. Cultivate self-control self-control is one of the spiritual virtues listed in galatians chapter 5 in galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23 we won't be able to go there it's one of the virtues christian virtues love of the spirit is love joy long suffering temperance and this and that nine of them were listed there so self-control if you are going to be a successful uh, child of God, if you are going to have a successful walk with God, you must have self-control. Self-control. Self-control is what helps us to resist temptation. Self-control is what helps us to avoid conforming to the ways of the, uh, of the world. That's why the Bible says that we should not conform to this world. Why? Because it is dangerous. You find that people that conform to the standard of this world is because their self-control is gone or very low. Hallelujah. In the book of Titus, Titus, the Bible says, for the grace of God. Yes, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Oh yes, teaching us to deny all ungodliness and worldly lusts. Oh yes, that is what God wants us to do. He taught us to deny, don't approve, deny ungodliness, worldly lusts, and to live, how? Soberly, righteously, and godly in this very present age. That is Titus uh, chapter 2 from verse 11 to 12. That's what the Bible says. The grace of God has appeared unto you. If you are listening to me tonight, beloved, the grace is available to you. And that grace is saying one thing. It's teaching us to deny ungodliness. Oh yes, deny ungodliness. Deny worldly laws. Live soberly. Live righteously. Live godly on this present earth. Let me say this, people of God. Hallelujah. There is a general say that we say in the world. We often say that you cannot eat your cake and have it. Isn't it? Yes. So it is spiritually. Some people want to eat their cake in the spirit realm and they want to have it in the physical realm. It is not possible. Once you eat your cake in the spirit realm, you have nothing left in the, spirit, in the physical realm. And let me say this. Let me explain to you what it means. Do you know, people of God, that if Joseph had agreed 
with his master's wife to commit to be cheating to be committing immorality with his master's wife it is possible potiphar might not know but may i let you know that an exchange will take place once joseph is committing immorality with his master's wife yes his glory yes god's plans and uh, 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 god's plan for joseph for him to get to the position of prime minister will have been exchanged for temporary pleasure oh yes he won't get to that position don't doubt it he will not he will not and why am i saying this okay once he agreed with potiphar's wife potiphar's wife will not report him to potiphar that he wanted to rape him true or false i'm asking us oh that is true god bless us because the moment they start their illicit affairs they become friends with benefits this is what they call it in this our generation oh they say oh we are friends with benefit it is immorality no matter how we coined it no matter the abbreviation i will say oh we are just uh fwb friends with benefit that benefit is immorality so if joseph had agreed to be his mother's wife a boyfriend or sugar boy the woman will not report him to potiphar and if he's not reported to potiphar he won't get to prison and if he did not get to prison he will not be able to interpret dream for the kings a butler and Kobiara, which was what took him from the jail to the palace. May I let us know, people of God, that how many children of God had given up their divine heritage? How many children of God had given up what God wants to do in their life for temporary enjoyment, for two or three minutes or ten minutes enjoyment? They gave up their glory the bible says the israelite they gave up their glory they gave it up as if they don't have god they gave it up their glory like in the similitude of an animal i pray for you tonight that you will not give up your glory for anything in the name of jesus and if there's anyone whose glory has been taken away because of the pleasure of the flesh the lord almighty god we have mercy on you in the name of jesus and your glory will be restored in jesus name amen point number three before we start praying now that we should learn tonight Point number three, do not forget divine revelation. Don't forget divine revelation. Don't forget your vision. Don't forget your dream. Joseph had a dream. In Genesis chapter 37, 5 to 10, we won't be able to read it. In Genesis, write it out. Genesis chapter 37 from verse 5 to 10. He had a dream that they were in the field. And we are making the ships. And his own ships stood upright. And his brother's ships, I mean, they were around him. They stood around him. And they bowed down to his own ships. And the brother said, what does this mean? Do you mean that we are going to be serving you? And eventually we know the end of the story. He had that dream. He never allowed anything to take the dream and the vision away from him. He went through the predicament. He went through tough times. He went through temptation, but it did not allow anything to take away that dream from him. Hallelujah. Beloved, let me say this. Let me say this. What revelation has the Lord shown you about your life and future? That dream that you had before you left your country. That dream, that vision, that passion, that desire that you have that once I get to this social -so place, once I got this job, once I am married, once I graduate, once I find a good church like this, once I have money, once I buy my car, I will do this. What happened to the vision, people of God? A lot of people leave the shores of their country and once they get to North America, they say, whoa, this is life. They forgot about the vision God has given them. What happened to that vision? And I'm going to ask us again. Oh yes, people of God. Yes, if you are a student, before you are admitted into that college or university, you have passion, you have vision for yourself, what you will do, how you are going to be the best of the best. 
how you are going to come up with innovations and ideas what happened to those vision if you are a student have you allowed the social media to take away your vision have you allowed the internet or your laptop to take away your vision your passion for tomorrow i pray that the lord almighty god will minister to you and bring back those vision and that your determination in the name of jesus and finally now before we start praying shortly yes covet the last uh, point for us to learn tonight covet spiritual gifts covet them develop yourself spiritually develop your spiritual life it is important proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 the bible says a man's gift make it room for him and brings him before great men hallelujah a man's gift make it room for him and bring it in before great men what brought joseph from the jail what brought him out i know his grace of god but his gifting ability to interpret dream is what brought joseph out of the jail is what took him from the jail to the palace the gift of a man will make room for him i pray and i encourage all of us yes yes the fasting is coming to an end tomorrow but what does that mean does that mean that we just fold our hand and we go back say more say more no you, you you must god has put you in an environment in a in a living church like christ supreme ministry but make use make use of all the resources that we make available through our teachings the sunday school the bible studies uh, confront and conquer honey out of the rock night vigil and other programs that we have come and learn write them down be liberian christians apply all those things to your life and you will grow spiritually and shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Let us stand up. Let us stand up tonight. It's time for us to begin to pray. I want us to pray tonight. Let us stand up. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, I want us to begin to thank the Lord. As we begin to pray, go before the Lord. Say, thank you, Lord. Oh yes, for another day of special grace. Yes, to wait on you. Oh yes, begin to thank the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for another day of special grace to wait on you. Father, I give glory unto you as i seek your face tonight in prayers i shall go back home justified and fulfilled in the name of jesus begin to thank the lord father i thank you lord this is the ninth day lord of our fasting and prayer i thank you lord for the grace lord holy spirit divine as i seek you tonight in prayers lord let me go back home justified and fulfilled in the name of jesus begin to appreciate the lord begin to appreciate the lord Oh, yes, for the grace for this ninth day. Father, I will go back home. Oh, justified Father, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, release unto me the spiritual gifts that we connect me with great men of my time for my fulfillment in the name of jesus holy spirit divine oh yes lord release unto me oh yes as i convert spiritual gifts that will connect me yes with men with people that match us in this my present time to fulfill my purpose in life oh yes in the name of jesus holy spirit divine father i cry unto you lord release unto me lord the spiritual giftings lord that we connect me lord with people that matters begin to ask the lord ask the lord for those spiritual gifts word of knowledge oh yes word of wisdom oh yes designing of the spirit oh yes gift of speaking in tongues interpretation of tongues oh yes prophecy oh yes in the name of jesus oh yes walking of miracles oh yes gift of faith begin to ask the lord begin to ask the lord mention them mention them mention them father release unto me lord oh yes the gift of prophecy oh yes the gift of interpretation designing of the spirits oh yes lord almighty god release those gifts unto me lord to connect me father with people that matters lord in my own time lord that i will be fulfilled father in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit divine in jesus mighty name i receive my gifts 
Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to declare like this. Say, I refuse. I refuse to fall for satanic bait meant to exchange my glory in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. People of God begin to pray. Oh yes, Potiphar's wife was a bait for Joseph. If, jo if Joseph had fallen for that woman, that would be the end of God's plan and purpose for him. Cry unto the Lord. I refuse to fall for satanic bait meant to exchange my glory in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, pray the same prayer for your children. Father, I pray for my children, Lord. They will not fall for satanic bait oh yes meant to extend their glory oh yes in the name of Jesus father I cry unto you I will not fall for the satanic bait meant to extend my glory in the name of Jesus I will not I will not fall for the bait meant to extend my glory oh yes in the name of Jesus every satanic bait meant to yes Lord meant to extend my glory I shall not fall for them in the name of Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen hallelujah let's take number four like this go before the Lord say so by the grace of God by the grace of God I shall not be distracted from my divine purpose and assignment in life in the name of Jesus beloved cried unto the Lord a lot of believers have been distracted by one thing or the other and they left undone that which God had committed unto their hand. They left undone that which God had proposed for them. Cry unto the Lord. I shall not be dis uh, distracted from my divine purpose and assignment in life. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Pray, 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 pray. People of God, the, it was a divine assignment for Joseph to be at Egypt. That you'll be able to help the land of Egypt during the time of famine to come up with ideas how the land will be preserved. Oh yes, Yes, but he did not. He was not distracted by the, his master's wife. Cry unto the Lord, Father, I shall not be distracted from my purpose, from my divine purpose and assignment in life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I shall not be distracted. Oh yes, my children shall not be distracted. Oh yes, my wife shall not be distracted. I shall not be distracted. I pray for all of you tonight. You will not be distracted. In the name of Jesus, every organized arrangement to distract you oh yes in the name of jesus we frustrate that arrangement in the name of jesus oh yes father lord i pray for the leaders of the church we shall not be distracted as a church we shall not be distracted oh yes from our divine assignment and purpose in ministry in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit divine blessed be the name of the lord in jesus mighty name we are not distracted amen hallelujah let's pray like this citadel of household wickedness citadel of household wickedness citadel of household wickedness envious of god's grace and blessing upon my life and household be disgraced openly now in the name of Jesus citadel of household wickedness that are envious of God's grace and blessing upon my life and my household yes be disgraced now openly now oh yes oh yes oh yes father disgrace their countenance disgrace their arrangement and plans against me and my household oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes the law will disgrace you every citadel every arrangement oh yes in the name of Jesus every team of wickedness also wickedness from my father's house and father's house mother's house that are envious of God's grace and blessing upon my life and my children be disgraced now be disgraced now be disgraced now be disgraced now 
Father, I cry unto you, wherever they are narrating me in their coven, wherever they have gathered together, according to your word, your word says, surely they will gather, but because their gathering is not of the Lord, whosoever we gather against the family of Henry Fakwade, whosoever we gather together concerning the church of God, Christ's supreme ministry, oh yes, to narrate us for evil, the Lord shall disgrace them openly. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, the Lord shall disgrace them openly. In the name of Jesus, citadel of household wickedness, envious of God's grace and blessing upon my household and myself, be disgraced. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, they are disgraced openly. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take the sixth one like this. Hallelujah. Every conspiracy, every conspiracy meant to put my destiny in jail and dungeon of wickedness scatter in the name of Jesus. Every conspiracy meant to put my destiny in jail and dungeon of wickedness scatter, 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 scatter. Command them now, command them to scatter every arrangement. Oh, yes, oh, yes, every conspiracy that is meant to put my destiny in jail and dungeon of wickedness, it shall not stand because it has not been spoken by the Lord. It shall not stand, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, every arrangement and conspiracy meant to put my destiny or that of my children, every conspiracy meant to put the destiny of anyone praying tonight in the jail. Oh, yes, they shall scatter, 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 scatter in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, they scattered. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us take number seven like this. Go before the Lord. Human agents that have received assignments to tempt me in order to take my glory. Your hands shall not perform your enterprise. In the name of Jesus, every human agent, oh yes, that have received assignment to tempt me in any way, form, or shape in order to take my glory. Your hand shall not perform your enterprise. Your hand shall not carry out that assignment. In the name of Jesus, oh yes, oh yes, in the name of Jesus, as our Lord Jesus Christ, oh yes, disgraced the devil, the Satan, when he tempted him on the mountain. Oh yes, Lord you are disgraced in the name of Jesus every human agent that has received assignment or commission every human agent that has been summoned to tempt me in order to take my glory oh yes you shall not be successful in that assignment I declare that assignment a total failure your hand will not perform that enterprise the law will disappoint your devices against me and my, yes, and my household oh yes in the name of Jesus every human agent that has be commissioned oh to tempt me to lure me in any shape oh yes or form in the name of jesus i declare that your assignment illegal and unsuccessful and a total failure in the name of lord the father the son and of the holy spirit in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen don't let us be tired people of god go before the lord tonight cry unto the Lord. Say, by divine exception, O Lord, by divine exception, O Lord, I frustrate every arrangement meant to set me up for damn for i frustrate it now in the name of jesus arrangement that has been put together oh yes in the name of jesus that is meant to bring me to fall down by divine exception oh yes i escape from it in the name of jesus oh yes lord i frustrate every arrangement meant to set me up to fall down i shall not fall by the grace of god in the name of jesus every satan arrangement meant to yes lord meant to frustrate every satanic arrangement meant to set me up so that i can fall in the name of jesus the lord almighty god is solidly behind me oh yes lord in the name of jesus the everlasting arm of the lord is behind me i shall not fall my also shall not fall oh yes everyone praying tonight i pray for you you will not fall from the grace of god in 
the name of Jesus, the mighty hand of God that dwells valiantly will sustain you and empower you. In the name of Jesus, by divine exception of the Lord, I frustrate every arrangement meant to set me off, to fall down, to die for downfall. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, I shall not fall. The Lord is my mighty God. In the name of Jesus, my strength, my shield, my buckler. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, your word says your name is a strong tower. I and the Fakwade to get down with my asshole will run into your name, Father. We shall not fall in the name of Jesus. I frustrate every arrangement meant to set me up for downfall in the name of Lord the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we frustrate them. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's proceed, people of God. Let's go before the Lord. The vision for my life and children is for an appointed time. Let's take it again. The vision for my life and my children is for an appointed time. It shall not lie, nor tarry forever. They shall manifest gloriously this season in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit divine. I thank you, Lord, for the vision for my life and that of my children, Lord. Yes, in the name of Jesus, that vision is for an appointed time, and this is the time. The time for divine exception is the appointed time. The time for divine exception is for is that appointed time. It shall not lie, it shall not tarry forever. In the name of Jesus, manifest now manifest gloriously oh yes in the name of jesus manifest gloriously now oh yes in the name of jesus manifest gloriously now oh yes in the name of jesus oh yes my divine my divine assignment oh yes the vision of the lord for my life and my household it shall manifest gloriously in the name of jesus this is the appointed time my time of divine exception oh yes manifest oh yes manifest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, they all manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take the next one like this. Oh, yes. Go before the Lord. Say, divine favor that located Joseph and made him to excel in foreign land locate me and my house so this season in the name of jesus i want us to pray this people of god if joseph can find favor in foreign land and in exile and he exiled and oh yes in the name of jesus and daniel and all his friends too they found favor and they exile why not if not go before the lord divine favor that located joseph and made him to exile in foreign land locate me now locate me now locate me now locate me now and my household this very season oh yes in the name of jesus let the oil of favor of the lord let it rest upon my head let it rest upon the head of my children oh yes in the name of jesus to excel in this land and beyond this land wherever i go and my children oh yes the oil of favor of the lord will rest mightily upon our head oh yes in the name of jesus let the favor of the lord locate me now that's same favor of the Lord that located Joseph and he was favored wherever he went. Father Lord, let that, that, let that magnitude of favor rest upon me and my household. Let it rest upon your church. Let it rest upon everyone praying tonight. Oh yes, that magnitude of favor of God that located Joseph is upon you and your household in the name of Lord the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Beloved, after this, we have two more. Then I have three other prayers that we're going to pray separately. Go before the Lord. Say, by divine exception, O Lord. By divine exception, O Lord. God's blessing upon me, upon my family, shall not become gateway for afflictions let's take it again let's take it again as on the board divine exception oh lord by divine exception oh lord god's blessing 
upon my family shall not become gateway for affliction and sorrow in the name of jesus oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes begin to pray oh yes divine uh, by divine exception oh lord god's blessing upon my life upon my family shall not become gateway for affliction oh yes in the name of jesus oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes blessed be the name of the lord in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen let's go back to that same prayer let me explain it so that we can understand yes when god blesses us the bible said god gave it to us power to make wealth and riches and it does not add sorrow to it so this is what this prayer is saying that by divine exception every blessing that the lord has released to my family they shall not become an entrance point for afflictions and sorrow yes whatever the lord has blessed you with they must bring you joy and peace and occasion to worship the lord with it it shall not become point of sorrow for you so will you be able to pray it let's go before the lord by design by divine exception oh lord by divine exception oh lord god blessings upon my family shall not become gateway for affliction and sorrow in the name of jesus i want you to pray 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 yes in the name of jesus that your job that god has given you shall not become source of pain or sorrow for you your children the lord has given them for you oh yes are signs and wonders oh yes they shall be mighty around your table they shall not become point of sorrow or pain for you in the name of jesus that your marriage God has provided you your spouse he shall not become a gateway for sorrow or regret in the name of Jesus oh that your business God has blessed you with a business oh yes in the name of Jesus it shall not become gateway for affliction or sorrow in the name of Jesus the Lord that brought you to this land has a plan and purpose for you your coming to this land shall not become gateway for affliction and sorrow in the name name of jesus because you have stepped upon this land oh yes the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof and those that dwell in it the lord that brought you here we feed you with the honey of this land in the name of jesus we feed you with the milk of this land in the name of jesus that decision that you have made will not cause you sorrow in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit divine in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen let's take this one like this equip me O lord with your fear and honor equip me O lord with your fear and honor that i may always reference you all the days of my life in the name of jesus i want you to pray father equip me lord with your fear and honor that i will always reference you all the days of my life father in the name of jesus holy spirit divine oh yes lord teach me lord equip me lord almighty god with your fear and honor oh yes father that i will always honor you all the days of my life in the name of jesus father thank you holy spirit divine in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen this is the last one on my record here but i have three other prayers that i want us to pray before we go tonight go before the lord say i destabilize i destabilize every arrangement meant to lock up my glory in witchcraft jail I destabilize it oh yes in the name of jesus i want you to pray this people of god destabilize it i destabilize every arrangement meant to lock up my glory in witchcraft jail i destabilize it in the name of jesus i shatter the law in the name of jesus every arrangement oh yes that is meant oh yes to lock up my glory in witchcraft jail i destabilize it i destabilize it i destabilize it i destabilize it in in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit divine in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen hallelujah 
and these three other prayers uh, on the screen now we have finished what I put them before but while I was here this evening preparing for this meeting these three prayers was dropped in my heart and I want us to pray it with all fervency and determinations and the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus number one remember as we said Joseph did not give up the vision and passion and there are so many believers because of what we have gone through many of us have, give, have given up the vision of what God gave to us and we settle for less but tonight because you are part of this program yes if this is relevant to you I want you to cry unto the Lord I want you to declare this say wherever I gave up my divine assignment wherever I gave up my divine assignment and vision for something else by divine exception oh lord i recover them now in the name of jesus i want you to pray in the name of jesus wherever i gave up my divine assignment my divine vision and purpose in life wherever i gave them up for something else holy spirit divine have mercy on me by divine exception i recover them 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 I I recover them. Oh, ye, my vision. Oh, yes, I recover them. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus, my divine assignment. If I have given it up for something else, Father, have mercy on me. Restore them unto me. I recover them. 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 I want you to pray. People of God, pray. Don't be discouraged. Oh, yes, if you are discouraged, it's a sign that the enemy wants you to give up that divine assignment oh yes the righteous man followed that seven times and the bible says he rises up each time go before the lord if i have given up oh yes my divine assignment because of any reason oh yes recover them i 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 recover them but the mercy of god and divine exception so shall it be in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen hallelujah beloved this next prayer that we're going to pray I, I encourage all of us please get up wherever you are tonight this prayer is for somebody and i pray that tonight as you cry unto the lord pertaining this that the lord will have mercy and compassion on you as we have read in genesis chapter 39 joseph was physically imprisoned they locked him up in jail for years but we want to thank the lord for your life and for my life you are not locked up in any jail i'm not locked up all of us we are free to move we drive up and down we go to work we go to everywhere so we are not locked up but the spirit of the lord laid this upon my life that there are lots of believers walking along the street driving nice car dressing up in suit and ties well dressed three-piece suit and nice skirt and blouse and headgears and this and that but the lord says that what they actually needed to fulfill that which god wants to do in their life that thing is locked up in the jail in the spiritual realm yes you can go about you can say i'm free and nobody locked me up but the spirit of the lord laid it upon my life upon my heart that what you needed has been actually locked up in the coven what you needed to fulfill to fulfill your destiny has been locked up in the realm of the spirit except you cry for the mercy of god except you cry for divine exception that that which you needed let me say this people of god it is possible for joseph to still be in potiphar's house and be having illicit affairs with his master's wife without the master knowing it is possible joseph is riding in a car and he will still be enjoying it is possible he sits and eats the leftover from the boss it is possible he has some change but he won't get to that prime minister position so you can see that joseph can be in that house oh yes he can be living in a whole house he could have servant and horses but he will not 
get to the prime minister position. A lot of people are eating and drinking and marrying, but what they actually needed to be at the throne, to be at the seat of honor, has been locked up in witchcraft jail. You are going to cry unto the Lord. Say, Oh Lord, my Father, oh Lord, my Father, what Whatever I have needed, whatever that belongs to me, that will make me to fulfill my purpose in life. If it is locked up in the coven of witchcraft, I command tonight by divine exception. Come out of that place and locate me. Come out now. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Come out now. Whatever belongs to me that will make me to be fulfilled in life. If it has been locked up, oh yes, in the spiritual jail, I command them. Come out. 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 By divine session. Come out and receive them in the name of Jesus. Anything that belongs to me. Oh yes, Lord Almighty God, that has been locked up. In the, in the prison, in the spiritual realm. Whatever will make me to be fulfilled, Lord, as your servant, if it has been tampered with, if it has been locked up, oh yes, in the coven, if it has been buried below the sea, on the earth, in wherever it is, in the name of Jesus, but divine exception, I command you, come out now and locate me. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. And the last prayer we are going to pray. The Bible says in John chapter 16 verse 21. In John chapter 16 verse 21. The Bible says a woman. When she is in travail. She had pain. Why? Because her hour has come. A woman. When a woman is having labor pain. She will exercise pain and sorrow. Why? Because a time has come. But the Bible says, as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remember not more the anguish, the pain and the sorrow. She does not remember anymore. Why? Because she has the joy that a man has been born unto this world. Hallelujah. This message is for somebody. And I want you to listen to me tonight. A lot of time we whine. We complain. We whine. We complain. Oh, with all I've been doing. Oh, with all I've been praying. Oh, with this. We whine. We complain to God. And you don't know that what you are going through is like a bath pain. That as soon as you pass through that bath pain, joy we come in the morning joy we come in the morrow but the danger of it is this listen to me very well when believers are going through some challenges they apart from whining and complaining instead of them to look in one and say lord what are you trying to tell me what should i do what should i learn from this do you know what some believer does they circumvent the plans of god they circumvent if the Lord is saying, I'm blocking this place. Because if I block this place, that is the only way for you to go. So that you will meet your blessing. A lot of believers, they circumvent. They find another way to work out blessing for themselves. And they will miss that which God wants to do. I can give you two examples. Now, if I'm, number one example is from Genesis chapter 39 that we read about Joseph. If Joseph had ignored his conscience, which is the spirit of God, Joseph would have remained as the boyfriend to Potiphar's wife. And she would, he would die there as a servant. Yes. He would have, if, he, if he did that, he would have died as a servant. Then he won't get to the position of prime minister. It means that he has circumvented the, God's plan. God knew that the temptation will come. God knew that the wine bottlers and cup bearers will be in the jail. God knew that Joseph will interpret dream for them so that Joseph will be promoted and go and meet the, the, the king and king will promote him. If he had agreed with the woman, he would have circumvented God's plan for his life. If you don't understand that, in the Bible, time will not permit me. Rebecca, Rebecca wanted to circumvent he almost circumvented God's plan for his son, Jacob. 
Rebekah. Yes. He had her husband talking to Esau. Go and prepare me meal. Because the way things are going now is like anything can happen. God had already ordained. He said yes that the younger one, the elderly, elderly one will serve his junior. He said Jacob I have preferred. God has ordained Jacob to be great, to be blessed. But Rebecca found a means, a, a, a means to circumvent God's arrangement. She ran ahead of God's plan. Why it not be for God covenant and plan for Jacob? Jacob will have perished. Jacob will have amounted to nothing. I'm saying this people of God, don't look for shortcuts. That situation that you are going through, stay there. Wait on the Lord diligently. The Bible said, the psalmist said, I waited on the Lord diligently and the Lord had me out of his throne. Don't look for shortcuts. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Trust in him. He will not fail you. He said, as many that put his trust upon him, they shall not be put to shame. Don't circumvent the effort of God or God's plan for you. Wait and trust the Lord and cry to him so that he will show you the way. I want you to go before the Lord. This is the last prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, if there's any way I have circumvented your plans for me, have mercy on me. By divine exception, restore me back to the right path, Father. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Pray, 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 pray. If there's any way, Lord, I have manipulated my way out of your plan and purpose for me, have mercy on me by divine exception. In the name of Jesus, have mercy on me, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord uh, for tonight and I'm excited and I'm looking forward to tomorrow evening. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, is the last day of the fasting. Uh, break your fast uh, by 3 p.m. Uh, come up to the church. Uh, program start right away by 5 p.m. Uh, no, no stopping. 5 p.m. The program starts. Please come on time. And I want to personally make plea to all of us. If you are listening to me tonight, if you are in GTA, I encourage you Come on time. Invite a friend. God does not call this kind of program for nothing if he doesn't want to do anything. There are a lot of people that are going to enjoy divine exception. And you begin to see the manifestation before too long. Come on time. Come with friends and family and it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, for the little that we are able to do. Thank you, Lord, for every soul, Lord, that participated from day one to today. Lord, tomorrow is the last day. Help us, Father, Lord, as we cry unto you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we come to confront and conquer tomorrow by 5 p.m., Lord, we pray, Lord Almighty God, that heavens over the meeting will open in the name of Jesus. By divine exception, Father, if there's anyone, Lord Almighty God, that has been experiencing recurring failure, recurring disappointment, recurring affliction, divine exception of the Lord, we vindicate you tonight in the name of Jesus. As you come prepared for tomorrow, the Lord Almighty God will locate you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit Divine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, our Lord, the Father. Holy Spirit Divine Father, this is our prayer request that we have used since phase three. And all that that was sent to me recently. And all that that are online. Maybe you have not written. I join my faith with you. As you lay your hands upon your heart. Oh yes father I pray. Every request written down here. Every request unspoken. Every request on the heart of your people tonight. Lord by agreement. Your word says if any two shall come. Shall agree together. As touching anything on earth. It shall be done unto them. Father we agree in one voice. We agree in one voice that by divine exception every 
every request written here tonight shall become testimony in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, shall become testimony in the name of Jesus. Favor, unprecedented Father, let it locate every request here Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, as Joseph found favor in the foreign land, let every request here Father Lord, let them receive, let them find favor of God in the name of Lord the Father, the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, our Lord, the Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah, beloved. I congratulate you for being part of tonight's meeting. And tonight, and uh, tomorrow, by the grace of God, we'll wrap it up. Please, I don't want you to be like the nine lepers. Please, we want to listen to your testimony. We want to listen to what God has done during this season, and before this season, and after this season. Please, feel free. Give me a call and we'll be glad to take your testimony. It shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Tomorrow evening, once again, 5 p.m., come with your friends and send out the flyer to them. God bless you. Let us share the grace together. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen for what the lord has done tonight three jericho war pulling down hallelujah unto the lord one to go hallelujah 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 god bless you see you tomorrow 5 p.m god bless you thank you for listening to this message we invite you to visit us at www.christsupreme.ca for more spirit-filled messages and for more information about the church. You can also call us at 647-884-8494. God bless you.